What's up guys, Rogue9 here, Luke aka Dercetius, the mountain god of ancient Lusitanian mythology and Daniel Silvera both asked me to do a comparison between the angled grip and the vertical grip in Rainbow Six Siege. And even though there were a couple of videos created all the way back when the angled grip was first introduced, there have been some changes to it since then. So I went ahead and ran some tests and will be sharing my results with you in this video. Let's get to it. You know the drill by now, if you're interested in my experimental setup and the raw data I gathered as well as my analysis of that data, stay tuned, otherwise feel free to skip forward to 11 minutes and 9 seconds now, where I will present to you my final conclusions. Now it is an indisputable fact that attaching a grip to your weapon, whether angled or vertical, will have a positive effect on your weapon's handling. So attaching a grip is a no-brainer, but the question is, if a weapon can attach either the angled grip or the vertical, which one do you choose? That's what I aim to explore in this video, and for that reason, I limited my experiments to 15 different weapons, those that can attach either the vertical or the angled grip. This list includes 5 SMGs, 7 assault rifles, 2 battle rifles and a shotgun. And with that, over to the experiments, and we will be starting off with experiments on the angled grip. The purpose of the angled grip of course is to accelerate the transition between hip fire and ADS, so it increases the speed at which you can aim down sight. Now before we get to measuring the ADS time, let's first test some of the confounding variables. For instance, does the type of sight you attach to your gun influence the aim down sight time in any way? And the answer to that question is no, no it doesn't. What about the vertical grip? Does that influence the ADS time compared to having no grip at all? And again, the answer to that question is no. Following on from these tests, I'm going to use the exact same method, simply measuring the time it takes to aim down sights with and without the angled grip, to find out how much of a benefit the angled grip provides to each individual weapon. Let me show you a quick example of how I did this on the AR-33. The angled grip is on the left hand side of the screen and as you can see it took 284 milliseconds to zoom in, while for the vertical grip on the right it took 452 milliseconds. Zooming back out again takes 318 milliseconds irrespective of which grip is attached. Now I quickly want to mention a slight limitation on this method of analysis. I'm analysing this footage only at 60 frames per second. And since an animation can sometimes start or finish right at the beginning of a frame or sometimes right at the end of a frame, I did see some variance in the results by plus or minus one frame usually. And at 60 frames per second this can mean a difference in results of up to 34 milliseconds. Furthermore, I assume that the ADS times are nice and round numbers really, but since I'm stepping through the footage one frame at a time, which is 16.667 milliseconds at a time, we end up with these slightly wonky looking times of like 452 milliseconds, even though it probably isn't exactly that. So that's how I tested the angle grip, now let's go over to the results. The ADS times for the 15 weapons I tested can be grouped into four different categories. The slowest weapon was Blackbeard's Mark 17 with an aim down sight time of 686 milliseconds without the angled grip and 418 with the angled grip. The next slowest gun is Thermite's 556XI with times of 535 milliseconds and 335. The next group is quite large and includes most of the assault rifles as well as the Saiga 12 shotgun and the times here are 452 and 284 milliseconds. And finally we have the group with the fastest ADS times, which is mostly SMGs and Jackal's C7E, which I found really interesting. One of the hardest hitting assault rifles in the game also has the aim down sight time of an SMG. This makes this gun extremely powerful and I wonder if this is something that's going to be patched in future. To me it just doesn't make sense how a gun that is as strong as Thermite's 556XI should also have such an amazing mobility. Nevertheless, there it is and the times for this group are 301 milliseconds and 184. So if we calculate the reduction in ADS time now, we get results in the range of 37.2% up to 39.1%. 
Now, keeping in mind the limitations on the granularity of my data I mentioned earlier, I would guess that the ADS time multiplier for the angled grip in the code is probably minus 40%. So all of the weapons receive the same relative benefit by attaching the angled grip, but of course the absolute benefit is larger for the slow weapons like the Mark 17 and the 556XI. Now this could be used as an argument for using the angled grip on the slower weapons since the benefit is the greatest, but at the same time if you have weapons that are already fast to aim down sight and you can speed that up by 40% on top of that, well, that represents a great argument for attaching the angled grip to the weapons with great mobility. And now, irrespective of which of these arguments appeals to you more, I think we can safely say at this stage that a 40% reduction in aim down sight time is quite valuable. This becomes even more relevant if you consider that quick scoping doesn't work in Rainbow Six Siege. Your gun only reaches its full accuracy once you are fully scoped in. As you can see here, if you fire your gun before you are fully scoped in, your gun will still suffer from a significant spread. The only downside to attaching the angled grip, at least with these 15 weapons, is that you cannot at the same time attach the vertical grip, which means that you sacrifice the advantage in recoil reduction that you could have instead. So the next question we need to answer is, how much recoil reduction does the vertical grip offer? Now, as before, let's first have a look at some potentially confounding variables. Can we confirm that the angled grip has no influence on recoil whatsoever? Easiest way to check is to burst fire at a wall once with the angled grip and once without and compare the resulting patterns. Now, those patterns look very similar and if I overlay a few lines going through the centers of the bullet concentrations, we can see that they match up very well. So yes, the patterns are of course randomized, so they're not exactly the same, but they are equivalent. The angled grip does not influence recoil. Confirmed. The vertical grip is meant to affect recoil, so it wouldn't be surprising to see a difference in the recoil pattern between the angled and vertical grip. But something else I wanted to check before getting into the results is whether or not there is a difference in the vertical grip's performance when it comes to automatic fire or single fire. So let's first take a look at how the AR-33 patterns both with the angled grip and vertical grip compared and we can see a modest benefit that adds up with each shot fired so that by the time we reach the end of the burst we do see a reasonable improvement. Now let's look at the same thing but for chained single fire shots fired in groups of seven or at least most of these groups are seven the last group in each magazine is four shots instead but I don't think that that really makes any difference. And in order to be as consistent as possible, I created a macro for one of my mouse buttons so we always have the same fire rate and the same number of shots. Now looking at the results, one interesting thing we can see is that for both the vertical and the angled grip, rapidly chained single fire shots actually create more recoil than firing full auto. Nevertheless, what I wanted to test here is whether or not the vertical grip provides the same benefit in single fire as it does in full auto, and I think I can safely say that yes, this is also confirmed. When it comes to assessing how much of a benefit the vertical grip provides in actual numbers, I could try to create several recoil patterns for both vertical grip and non-vertical grip and then overlay them and compare them to each other. And apart from being an awful lot of work, I think the accuracy and validity of such a test could be questionable. So before jumping into that, I thought I might as well just try to work with the recoil patterns that the game gives us. Here you can see the five shot burst patterns that the game provides for each of the weapons. For each of these pattern pairs, on the left hand side is the one for the angled grip and on the right hand side the one for the vertical grip. Luckily all of the patterns were to the same scale with one exception, the one for the Saiga 12 shotgun. This allowed me to emphasize the grid pattern that is already available in these images and then basically just eyeball the recoil elevation of the fifth shot in each of the patterns. Now this may sound like something that should shouldn't really work and shouldn't really provide consistent results, but surprisingly, it was really accurate and I'm really happy with the results. I conducted this visual estimation for all of the 15 guns, and for each of the guns the improvement was very consistently close to 25%. Even on the different scale of the Saiga 12, by counting the tiny little squares, I still ended up with an improvement ratio of 26.4%, which is close enough for me. 
Of course, you can combine the vertical grip with muzzle attachments to reduce the recoil even further. I used the same method to find out that the muzzle brake will reduce the recoil by 15%, but this of course only when firing single shots. For full auto fire, the flash hider is more appropriate and it can provide 10% reduction in vertical muzzle climb. So what does this mean when you combine either of these muzzle attachments with the vertical grip? Combining the muzzle brake will give you a recoil reduction of 36.25% for single shots only of course, while combining the flash hider with the vertical grip will give you a recoil reduction of 32.5%. So to summarize these findings, by providing a 25% reduction in recoil, the vertical grip is the most effective recoil management tool you can use. Yes, there are also the muzzle attachments, but the compensator doesn't actually reduce your vertical recoil at all. The flash hider gives you only a 10% reduction and the muzzle brake gives you only 15% and that only for single fire shots. So if you're using a weapon with an above average recoil like the Para 308, the 552 Commando or the Mark 17, you may want to consider doubling up on your recoil management. But I think with that, we've now covered my methodology and the raw data quite well. Time to move on to the conclusion. Welcome back to all of those rejoining the video right here. When it comes to ADS time, neither the vertical grip nor your choice of optic will have any effect at all. The only way you can shorten your ADS time is with the angled grip and the benefit you will see is a 40% faster ADS. And this can be quite an important benefit since quickscoping does not work in Rainbow Six Siege. Your weapons only become fully accurate once you have completed your aim down sight animation. To recap the recoil management stats, the vertical grip gives you a benefit of 25% reduction in recoil, the muzzle brake will give you a 15% benefit but only for single fire, and the flash hider will reduce recoil by 10%. So after all of that, what does this really mean? Well, the easy answer for me is that it's kind of down to you. If you struggle to control your weapons in full auto fire, it might be worth it for you to double up on your recoil management by using a muzzle attachment as well as the vertical grip. But I think with experience and practice, recoil management becomes easier anyway, and taking advantage of the around 40% reduction in aim down sight time can give you a real edge when it comes to acquiring your target and being able to quickly put accurate fire downrange. So on balance, I would lean towards using the angled grip instead of the vertical grip, but it is also partially down to personal preference and I just hope that the numbers I've been able to dig out for you make it easier for you to understand what benefit you're actually getting and what solution is most suitable to you. And with that guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.